بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين um, جزاكم الله خير for attending إن شاء الله today we will talk about um, reflecting on the Quran and the goal is to talk about various subjects about the, uh, like how to reflect and, and what's the best way to think about reflection and uh, how to get there إن شاء الله um, if you have any questions feel free to ask it in the chat um, also I'll be um, having some time for questions at the end, inshallah. So um, before we talk about the reflection in the Quran, um, if you if you think about this life and, and how can you be um, successful in this life? Um, and after a bit of, of, of thinking about it, you will notice that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how to be successful in this life in the very first ayah um, that was revealed, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, read with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so the way to be successful um, ultimately comes down to knowledge. Like you have to know um, how to, like how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to, um, that, and that there is only one God and and, uh, and that there is Jannah and there is uh, hellfire and all of that. And to to get to that or like, for knowledge, you, sometimes knowledge will actually be the reason for you to, to stay away from Allah. Um, that's why the reading has to be um, by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so the knowledge, when I talk about knowledge here, is the knowledge that's beneficial. Um, and the best source of that knowledge is the Quran. Um, and if you think about it, the reason for failure um, in this life and the reason for um, doing a sin is uh, a weak will. If you have a, a strong will, um, you will, especially if you have the knowledge, right? Like you have the knowledge, you know uh, what you should be doing. But when you have a, a like knowledge, but then weak will, you're not going to do what you have to do. Um, but so the reason for failure is the weak the weak will. Um, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, like we we have um, asked Adam before, um, and he he forgot, and we couldn't find him with a strong will, right? So you can think about it as like, if you have a strong will and you have knowledge, you can get to what you want to do or to where you want to be in, in Jannah, close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this dunya. Um, and, but you would lose your will once you actually um, forget. So forgetness happens. And then you have weak, weak will, and that leads to um, the person sinning or getting uh, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of that. Now, to, to keep a strong will all the time, you have to always have um, knowledge that is useful, like a beneficial knowledge that's always should be there. The beneficial knowledge has three attributes in it, like detailed, strong, and present. Right, detailed, strong, and present. Um, the reason for that is because if you, if you, for example, think about people who smoke or people who do any any sort of sins, um, sometimes you they know that it is bad. They, sometimes you know it's a sin, but just mere knowing is not enough, right? Like it has to be a strong knowledge. It has to be a knowledge that is present, so strong in the brain, so strong in the heart that they cannot just shake it um, away. That's why the Prophet sallallahu said. Um, when when someone commits zina uh, or do or or drink, I think the hadith goes um, in the in the time when they do this act, they are not a believer. The reason for that is because the knowledge is so weak, like it, it's not present, right? There is no there is no that knowledge does not exist in that moment, um, or the iman does not exist as well in this moment. Um, so and and if you think about it, are all the sins because of a, of a weak will? Um, assuming the person knows that it's, it's a sin. Um, so managing your well and keeping it strong and keeping keeping the knowledge present in, in your heart is one of the most important things you should do in this life. Um, to always have this this like your iman at a level that you always have what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants you to know um, present in your in your in your heart and present in your brain. Um, and this job is more difficult and more challenging when you remember that there is shaitan that is trying to always make you forget, right? Um, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said um, in the Quran, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam alla ta'abudu shaitan innahu lakum aduhu mubin wa ni'abuduni hadha salatu mustaqim. So the shaitan is literally our enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 
has told us this in the Quran. In the Shaytan alakum adun, fatakhidu hu adu alaka shaytan is your enemy, so make him your enemy. Um, and so, like, how can we protect against that? How can we protect against uh, the shaytan and against our nafs and against all of that to, to make sure we always have this knowledge present? It's simply through the Quran. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, after telling the story of, of Adam alayhi salam and shaytan, um, Allah says, Qala bita minha jami'an. He said, um, both of you go down uh, to away from Jannah to um, to the earth. Uh, you are you are enemies to each other. Um, once a guidance comes from me, uh, anyone who will follow, he will not have. Uh, he will he will be he will not be misguided he will be guided and and he will not have a difficult life or like he will not have shaqa which is mean difficulty and anyone who stay away from that guidance that i i put down or i reveal for you they will have a difficult life um and banka comes from like kind of like the heart thing you know like they will their, their heart is not going to be relieved their heart is not going to be good when i show you and the day of judgment they will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um will um make him blind um in the day of judgment and the ayah goes as like the person will ask why why you made me blind and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that's why because our ayahs came to you and you forgot it and today you will be forgetting too uh, so Quran is the way to to keep this knowledge alive. The Quran is the way to basically guidance. The, way, the Quran is the way to, um, um, to 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 stay away from sins and uh, stay on the right path. So um, another thing as well I would like to talk about is like what is actually the best time to read the Quran? What is the best states to read the Quran? Reading the Quran in general is is for sure good, but there are two. Um, two ways that are mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah that um, are advisable, and unfortunately, few like um, few of us would would actually do do them in these times. Um, the first the first one is the night prayer. Um, actually, in the very first um, like one of the first commands that came to the believers, the Muslims, um, in the very first few years, is to actually pray um, at night. In fact, it was uh, for one full year, praying at night was obligatory. Um, like every Muslim has to pray at night. And that came in, in Surah Al-Muzzammil. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qum al illa qalila. And it stayed like this for one year, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it uh, voluntarily. Now, when you think about it, like some people think uh, praying the night and reading the Quran at night um, is something good. And probably once you have a strong iman, you will be able to do it. Um, but here, it's actually the opposite what happened. It's it is the reason to have a strong demand. It is it is the start. You know, it's a way. It's the place where you start from that you have a strong foundation that you face the world. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, uh, one of the reasons why He made it obligatory for the Prophet to pray at the beginning and the Sahaba as well is because the 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 the, uh, the duty is heavy. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the believers and asking Allah, Allah, the Prophet sallam, to do is difficult. So that's why they should pray. And that's why they should talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this time. And that's why they should read the Quran at this time. Um, so that's that kind of changed the perspective about um, re, like praying at night is not really um, the way that you should think about, oh, like after I have like so many things done and then I'll do it. It's actually the reason why you will do the other things. So it's a, some, somewhere to start from and not to end at. Uh, per se. Um, the other one as well is Mudaras al Quran, which means like um, you and a friend or multiple friends reading the Quran together and reflecting on the Quran together. Um, and uh, the reason for that is actually increases the iman. Um, the Prophet, uh, there is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that it was said, uh, Ibn Abbas anhu, said, the Prophet وسلم, was very, very generous in general. Uh, and the best time where he was most generous is the Ramadan when Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him and they would read the Quran together. Um, so this act of reading the Quran together, reflecting on the Quran together, increases the Iman. Um, so, yeah. What are we? Yeah, here. Okay, the uh, other thing as well to remember is that um, anything worth having takes time. Um, that is including a reflection in the Quran. Sometimes you might find it 
not the easiest at the beginning. Sometimes maybe you, you listen to some khutbas and you see how, mashallah, they can come up with these amazing meanings and you cannot come up with, with those amazing meanings yet. Uh, but that's fine. That is very normal. Um, you, do, you have no idea how, how many hours they spent and how many books they read and all of that to come up with this uh, knowledge. So be patient. Um, and just like, subhanAllah, when you... Um, when you, like if you went to college or if you even like went to normal school um, and remember yourself when you, when you start school, you have no idea what the courses are. You have no idea what you're gonna study or even start a new job. But after a year or two actually doing the job, you, you find yourself, oh, okay, you know how to do things. Um, and when you meet people who just came, you're like, kind of like, you remember yourself, you used to know nothing. It's the same thing, exactly. Like, just like you, you struggle to, to learn and you be patient and you learn every day with something new. Um, same thing with the Quran, just be patient, learn, ask, um, do searching um, until you get there. Um, and yeah, I think I said this as well before, like, um, um, if you compare the time that we spend on an average course um, in, in college compared to the time we spend uh, doing Quran, it's really sad. Um, so like, don't, um, and we will all be asked about this, right? So don't, don't, uh, don't uh, feel like, oh, you should understand everything from day one. No, it is okay. Do searching, uh, spend some time with the Quran and everything, and you will get there for sure, inshallah. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهَدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Anyone who struggles in our path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them for sure. Um, and the other thing as well to think about is like, think about the, the meanings of the Quran as, a, as an ocean. And sometimes you might um, like be swimming on the surface. Some people will swim on the surface. Some people will go uh, deep in the, uh, and, and get the real treasures. Um, so, yeah. The other thing as well is reflecting is to say, yeah, what's the meaning of reflecting? So reflecting here, we don't mean, because there are people who get confused a bit. Uh, it's not really a hidden meaning per se, right? It's just um, the Quran is, is clear. Allah The only problem is that we, our language is really weak. That's all. Um, even Arabs, um, their, their Arabic language is really um, weak compared to the time where the Prophet ﷺ was there. Um, so that's why we might find it a little bit challenging, uh, but the Quran itself is clear. So the reflecting is not more, it's more about like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what can I, what lessons can I get from this story? What lessons can I get from this uh, ayah? How can I apply it on myself? And this comes from reflection and, um, and it comes after understanding the meaning of the ayah. So the first step is to understand the meaning of the ayah. And then after that, you do reflection to see how does it apply to you and how can it change your heart and how it change your situation, all of that. Um, and the other thing as well to be careful about is not to drive any fiqh from it, right? So if you read an ayah, um, that tells you something specific that you think like the sheikh said something different. Don't get confused because the way the way fuqaha drive drive hukum or drive what's halal and what's haram is not only looking at the Quran, but looking at the Quran and Sunnah and the, the what the Sahaba said and what the Sahaba did and all of that. Um, and there are multiple reasons for that. Um, we can get into it later. But in general, don't um, don't act like a faqih or a scholar starting to say what's halal and what's haram. Their goal is really to just um, like benefit yourself uh, and change your, your behavior and change your uh, mentality. Um, okay, and of course, like that's not to tell you you cannot be a faqih, right? Like you just, you just need to study and uh, get there, but don't jump right into it. Okay, um, so the other one as well is what are the signs? Like, how can you know I got there? How can I know that I'm reflecting on the right path? I'm like, that is where, where I am at. Uh, and you actually, if you if you check the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned in the Quran in the multiple ayahs, what are some of the signs of the people who understand the Quran and reflect on the Quran, um, right? And um, it's summarized here. Uh, so the very first one is actually uh, f like being focused um, and and reading the Quran with full intention and your heart and mind is attending and just listening and trying to understand, this is a really good sign. Uh, the second one is as well as uh, crying from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, increasing khushu'ah, increasing iman, uh, incre like actually repeating the ayah itself um, because you just like want to get more of it, um, being happy and uh, 
being happy and hopeful when you read the Quran and about reading the Quran. Um, the getting some example goose comes from uh, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, hope in Allah and, and tranquility uh, and also like uh, just having like feeling like you have to make sujood after reading those ayahs um, and subhanallah especially for example surah like uh, an najm at the very end of it um, like there is a story that uh, in the time of Prophet ﷺ, uh, even the disbelievers just made sujood from how how great the ayahs is. Just it is what it is, you know. Like you just wanna uh, make sujood after reading it. Um, and and remember, like this is a risk from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is a blessing from Allah. And and, and really, any day that pass without you um, experiencing any of those, this is a day that that is um, like someone should be sad about and and should cry about really, um, because that is literally the purpose why we're here. Um, okay, and uh, okay, so the Quran and the heart. Um, remember that your heart is is not in your control, and to get there, to get to the reflecting on the Quran, you should like the very first step is to love the Quran, right? And and loving the Quran sometimes it's not really in your control. That's why you should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love the Quran, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get you closer to the Quran, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to understand the Quran. Um, and love of the Quran, there are some signs that you love the Quran. Like for example, you're happy when when you when you start reading the Quran. You you like to stay long hours with it. Um, you miss the Quran if you didn't read it for for long. Um, if you have a problem, the first place or like one of the places you go to is the Quran to see what what you should do. Um, and the last one is you actually listen to what is being said there, um, and what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. Um, Okay, so how to get there? How to start loving the Quran? And the very first one is, as I said, like seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have to occur in him or reliance on him. Um, and there are one, two, three, four, four things that you can do um, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, make the Quran, like to love the Quran. First is when you read the Fatiha, actually this is dua for you to love the Quran. Uh, just because in Fatiha, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and this guidance is the Quran. And um, so this is one thing. Um, and the other one is uh, istiada. When you read, the, when you start reading the Quran, you say "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim So you uh, you seek refuge from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from the Shaytan, which we mentioned is our enemy and trying to make us forget and trying to make us stay away from the Quran. The other one is well, when you say Bismillah rahman rahim before reading, um, Bismillah. When you say Bismillah, you kind of like you're starting something with the name of Allah. You know, like you're relying on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with what you just started. So this is also uh, tawakkul on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The the last one is a beautiful du'a that uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught uh, Ibn Mas'ud. He actually said, anyone who with uh, with a lot of ham, with a lot of um, what's the meaning of ham? Um, maybe like um, difficulties, I guess, or like something that is like sad in his heart is like something heavy in his heart um he should make this dua which when dua goes as allahumma inni abduk uh, ibn abdik ibn amatik nasiyati fi yad biyadik maadin fi hukmun adlun fi qadaik as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak samaita bihi nafsak aw anzaltahu fi kitabik aw alamtahu ahadan min khalqik aw alhamta bihi ibadak aw istatharta bihi fi ilm fi ilm alghaybi 'indak an taj'al alquran rabi'a qalbi wa jal'a ahmi wa ghammi wa uh, so basically you're making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran the spring of your heart um, and the reason for your hem um, to, to, to go away. Inshallah, I'll share this link after as well, in the landed chat, um, if you want to know the dua. And um, and the other thing as well to remember is subhanAllah, like we like um, some people ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot for dunya stuff, right? Like so if they want to um, marry someone specific or if you if you want a specific car or if you want a new house or whatever they make a lot of dua for that uh, but we forget to do the same when it comes to the Quran right so um, just do the same thing ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot to um, to make the Quran uh, the spring of your heart and make the Quran like make you love the Quran and repeat it every day and uh, all of that um, the other one as well is to reflect and read about how important the, Qur the, the Quran is, right? Um, and um, we, we truly don't know um, what we have in our hands because if we did, if we truly did understand the, the magnificence of the Quran, we would be reading it all the time. We will not let it go. 
but just because of our ignorance, we do. Uh, and if you think about it, like if someone asked you and he said, like, uh, there is one book, if you if you read it and then there will be a test. And when you get that test, you're going to get like a $10 billion. I can assure you every single person is just going to like buy the book and start studying every single letter of it. Um, and, and the Quran is not just going to make you successful with a $10 million. It's going to give you even more, way more, right? Jannah, um, which is like $10 million is nothing uh, compared to Jannah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so that's why, like, um, subhanAllah, like, that's why, like, reflecting on the Quran and just thinking between you and yourself, like, what is the most important book, right? Like, we literally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has revealed to us his own, like, his words, right? Like, it cannot get better than this. Um, and we have it between our hands. Um, so just reflecting on that and, and realizing how great of a blessing we have between our hands um, that will that will naturally increase your love to the Quran because you would want um, to get to get more of it. Okay. Uh, the other aspect as well. What are some of the intentions that you can read the Quran with? So when you read the Quran, there are multiple intentions. Uh, mainly one, two, three, four, five, five intentions. Uh, the very first one is just seeking knowledge, right? Like so, you you're reading the Quran to know something, um, and when you read the Quran, you know about three things mainly. Uh, one is you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes and his and his doings. Um, and I remember uh, I was asked before, like, what's the best way to, to know the names of Allah? The best way to know Allah is through the Quran. Uh, even like when you read stories of the Anbiya, stories of the um, what happened in the past, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doings in the story. Like read Surah Yusuf. Uh, it's a story of, of Yusuf alayhi salam, but you need, you, you read in every um, single like, point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know doings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping his servants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and you see how how the 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 Yusuf alayhi salam think of Allah and how Yaqub alayhi salam think of Allah so everything in the Quran kind of like makes you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more um, the other one as well is uh, knowing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you right so when you read the same stories again for example you know okay like this is how um, Yaqub alayhi salam did, right? This is how Yusuf alayhi salam did, so I should do the same. Um, when you read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally just telling you, Ya ayyuhal amanu, oh you believers, do this. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. Uh, so this is the second thing you know um, from reading the Quran. The third one is knowing about the hereafter. So what will happen in the hereafter? Um, who are the successful people? Who are the losers? And all of that. Um, so what are the outcomes of this knowledge? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرْ لِذَمْ like know, know that, that there is only one, one God, um, or, or there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَمْ like, And make istighfar to um, your sins. Because once you know the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you will understand like, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ We really truly don't appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be appreciated, no matter what we did. Uh, so you'll be in a constant um, level or a constant place where you just do istighfar. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Even if you're doing um, ibad, you're still asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Because uh, once you realize who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're just like blown away. Um, and the other one as well is, uh, or the other sign or the other outcome is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِي um, The people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, with knowledge is the is those scholars. So once you know, uh, you will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay. The other one is, well, how to know um, that. Yeah, like how to get there, how to, how to get this knowledge. First is read the Quran like you read a book um, that you have an exam on. Um, like imagine tomorrow you have an exam in this book. So just reading with that attentiveness and reading with that attention, um, is important is important and remember that successful in the exam um, will mean that you will live like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to live you will be successful in this life and the hereafter and actually you will do the right thing in the right time um, if you read the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned three um, or maybe multiple ones but this is what uh, what they got here um, three examples of where it was very critical to know the right at the right time, what to do, right? Um, in the story of Abu Bakr and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they were in the Ghar, 
um, and the, the disbelievers were outside and the, the Abu Bakr told the Prophet ﷺ, if one of them just looked beneath their, uh, their, their feet, they will see us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ said, um, don't be sad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Um, so at this time of difficulty, at this time of, of ultimate need, uh, to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you, this is what you what you get as a result of uh, being connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. Um, the other one as well is Kalla inna ma'i ya Rabbi Sayyidin, Musa alayhi salam, same thing when when uh, when the Fir'aun was catching him um, and they had the uh, kind of like the, uh, the the sea in front of them um, and the the um, Bani Israel said to Musa, like that's it, he's he's gonna get us. Uh, Musa Ali Sam said, No, I, I have my Lord with me. Um, and the last one is actually uh, Yusuf Ali Salam. When um, the woman of Al Aziz um, came to him and she wanted to do the haram, uh, he said, Ma'ad Allah, innahu rabbi ahsan mathwai. Ma'ad Allah is like, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he's my Lord and he. Um, he has been good to me, you know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, do this. Uh, and Subhanallah, when you think about the the timing and the place and everything, it's very difficult to to um, to to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in this time. But Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will not let uh, let you down uh, in the time where you most need. If if you are with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala when the time uh, is relaxed. Um, the other intention to read the Quran. So the first one we said is knowledge, right? Uh, the second intention to read the Quran is doing. When you do something, um, or like to to know what to do, right? Like not just knowledge, actually to do things. Uh, because remember, if you know what you should do and you're not doing it and you're not planning to do it, sometimes you know something but you cannot now do it and you're asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help you do it. That's good. Uh, but if you're not planning to do it, if you're not doing it, this is a huge risk, right? Like you know you have knowledge without doing. This knowledge will be um, will be against you in the day of judgment. Uh, that's why. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said the Quran could be a reason for you to get to Jannah and, and could be the, the reason for you to get to hellfire again because he will be against you because you know you read and you didn't do it. Um, and the other one as well to remember that you read, like you should read with full submission. You should read with the intention. Um, you're, you're saying kind of like thing, you're saying like, oh Allah, show me what you want me to do and I'll do it. You know, like with this full submission without any prior um like agenda, prior understanding, prior anything. You're just trying to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you um, and do it. Um, with a caveat there, I'll mention inshallah um, in a bit. Okay, the other one as well is actually talking to Allah. When you read the Quran, um, you can read it. Of course, you can actually combine intention, right? So you can read it with not with the intention of knowledge. You can read it with the intention that you want to do whatever you um, you read. And the other one is, well, actually, you read it with the intention that you're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there's a, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not listen so attentively to anything uh, as he listens to a reciter, uh, a recitation of the Quran by a prophet who recites well um, with melodious and audible voice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to your uh, to your Quran and to your recitation. Uh, and, and remember that when you read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches you uh, or like listen to you. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you what you're asking for. Um, so like just understand this meanings while reading the Quran. And that's why when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to read the Quran, there's a hadith as well that when he passes through um, an ayah with um, with, with something that he wants, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And when he passes an ayah with something uh, that he um, doesn't want, like adab or punishment or something, he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to make him stay away from that. Um, and that is like a kind of a conversation, right? Like you're reading the Quran and you're seeing what is it and you're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Um, so when you think about it this way, it kind of like um, have a special meaning to it. And the other one as well, or the other reason or intention to read the Quran is uh, simply to get the thawab, right? There's a hadith of the Prophet said, there's actually huge, huge ajr and huge rewards from reading the Quran. Uh, one of them is there is a hadith of the Prophet said, that every, um, every letter that you read, you get 10, 10 hasana. Um, there are other as well uh, hadith about how much reward you can, you can get. Um, and the, the last one or the last intention is istishfa, uh, which is basically asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure you by the Quran. Um, and the Quran can heal from multiple things, right? Like it can heal your nafs from its desires. It can heal um, your heart from the doubts. 
uh, it can heal you from sadness and anxiety. It can heal you, uh, of course, all that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it, heal, it, it can heal you from heart diseases. It can heal you from physical disease as well. Um, but you can also think about it as um, just like um, if you remember what we talked about in the tawakkul lesson, we said, um, when you, for example, take your medicine, it's just uh, the it's just one of the reasons to get um, cured, and uh, the, ultimately, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one curing you. Um, and we also mentioned that uh, to remember, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala decided to create this world this way as a test for us, uh, which basically means this world is created in a way that when you do something, something happens, a cause and effect law, right? Um, and a, and and it's a test for believers to always remember it's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, who's who's curing you, not this um, kind of medicine that you took. So same thing, you can take the medicine, you can read the Quran as well, um, with the ultimate um, understanding that again, like the Quran, it's, like the Quran heals by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's one of the um, ways to ask uh, to ask for it. The other thing as well, it's always do it, better to do it yourself. Um, if you can't, it's okay to go to someone to read the Quran on you as well. Um, and the way to, um, to to ask for uh, healing by the Quran is to do two things: is to read it yourself, uh, especially at night, uh, or to do ruqya. Ruqya is coming from riq, which is like the water in the mouth. Um, so you can, like, for example, put some some on your hand, like a little bit, and you read and and you um, wipe yourself with it. Um, this is a good way to do it. Um, the the one before last before we see some examples inshallah is a tahzib the idea of a tahzib is you divide the quran in a way that you finish it period periodically right most of the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or like most of the narrations we have um, and even the tabi'in uh, who came after the prophet sallallahu used to read the quran every seven days um, like the whole quran right um, and the reason for that is because your heart needs this information to be always present um you know how for example if you um if you're if you're working now um, if i told you to remember something that you studied in university and you're not doing it anymore you're not going to remember because it has been so long um the quran should not be like that the quran should always be present with you and even for example if you're working in a specific field and you take a vacation for like i don't know like a year or something and you come back you're going to feel like you don't remember pieces of it and you have to come back again and, and do all of that. But you remember always something that you do usually or like uh, regularly. Um, and that's why the, the, they, were very, um, they were very sure to actually read the whole Quran in seven days. Now, this could be difficult. Um, and depending on like your speed and your um, understanding of the Quran and all of that, that's why you could do it like in 30 days. The Sahaba as well, or the scholar says 30 days is also good. Um, another way to do it as well is to actually divide the Quran. So, for example, you say, okay, I'll divide it. Like, I'll just focus on the first juz. And this first juz, I will finish it every seven days. Um, and, for example, after after three weeks, I'll add a bit. So, it will be two juz, and I'll finish it also in seven days, these two, two juz. So, I'll divide them to finish those two juz every seven days. And then you increase until you reach the whole Quran. Um, but also try to read the whole Quran as well in at least um, once every month uh, as well. Okay, yeah, the other one to remember as well is um, the right way to understand the Quran, right? Uh, if you have a letter um, that got to you in a language that you don't fully understand, because again, as I said, we don't really have the good Arabic as the people before, um, even Arabs. So what is, and, and you have two options to understand this Quran, right? Like two people came to you. One of them um, is telling you, like, I used to live in the time where the Quran was revealed. I used to live in that time. I understand the language. I know what the Prophet ﷺ was, was saying. I know what the Prophet ﷺ was doing. Um, so take my understanding of what I'm telling you. And the other one is telling you, no, don't worry. I will. I don't actually understand the language much. And I, some of them even don't speak Arabic at all. But trust me, I understand the Quran. Which one would you go for? Um, right? Like, it just makes sense that you will go with the person who was living in the time, who will understand. He understands the language the most. He was living with the Prophet ﷺ when it was revealed. That's why there's a huge emphasis on actually understand the Quran as per the understanding of the Salaf, uh, the people who, um, like the Sahaba and the Salaf and all of that. Uh, this is just a note um, to, to, as a remembrance. Um, and also one thing, 
and generally the most of the tafsir of the Quran are are good, um, especially the um, like for example the clear Quran, the Sahih International, all of them are good. Uh, one thing as well that I noticed in Quran.com is you can actually read the tafsir of Nikathir, uh, which is considered one of the best tafsirs um, of the of the Sahaba and Tabi'een and all of that. So the way to go to get to it is just go to the website and whatever I you choose, just go here and, and click tafsirs and it will give, show you actually multiple tafsirs. In English, there's only two tafsirs, but there are actually other ones as well. So even in order, they have to see Ibn Kathir. Um, in Bengali, I'm not sure. Yeah, but like in English, they also have to see Ibn Kathir. So you just um, uh, click it and you will find actually the tafsir. Um, if Ibn Kathir, uh, which is really good. Okay. So finally, inshallah, uh, I'll give you some examples about like some tools that you can use, inshallah, when you read in the Quran that will help you to reflect on the Quran. Um, the very first one is try to ask, how does this apply to me? Um, Right, so when you read an ayah uh, that talks about so, uh, people who do some specific thing or um, uh, or a story or something, ask yourself like, if if this happened today, which side will I take? Um, if I am, for example, was if I am today or like if I was one of the um, people who are closest to Pharaoh and had like my prestige and I was the person who's telling him what to do and all of that. Would I let Pharaoh go and go with Musa, risking all what I have, right? Like risking my prestige, risking my job, risking everything. Will I do that? Or will I stick with, with Pharaoh because, well, my livelihood, right? Like I don't want to be poor or whatever. Um, and asking these questions actually make you kind of like, like come to truth about what is going on. Um, and like in this example, for example, that I just mentioned, um, if someone today is working in a haram job, it's kind of like um, kind of like the same thinking. Um, there is an ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ أَرَادُ الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّ لَهُ عُدَّةً وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَاتَهُمْ فَثَبَّطَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَعِدِينَ In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is Surah Tawbah. Surah Tawbah is talking about multiple uh, things. One of them is the story of Tabuk, Ghazwa Tabuk, which is a Ghazwa that came, or like a, a, a war, that came in a very difficult time just because it was very hot. It was in the hot summer of Medina, which is very, very hot. It was in times where the, the, Sah or the people of Medina um, used to like the the fruit will be ri ripe, so they will actually take it and, and kind of like relaxing time, you know, like it's not time for hard working at all. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu has ordered every single one to go out and fight a room. A room. Think about a room as the most powerful um, power in that time, right? Um, so like I want you to put yourself into their shoes, right? Like I want you to imagine today it happened this similar thing, right? You're asked to do the same thing, to go out in the very difficult times, the very hot times. Um, you know that you're fighting people who there is nothing compared. Like you're you're fighting with very um, like um, how can I go I'll say it? Like very small things compared to like not advanced thing compared to what the room had, um, and you're asked to 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 walk for months before you even get to that fight. And then you fight with people who are more advanced than you, have more number, have more knowledge, have more um, like battlefield knowledge or whatever and all of that. Would you go or would you be with the people who would sit, right? Um, so just imagine yourself, like where am I today in my state of my heart? And if you, if you think you would have stayed, that is very dangerous because if you die like this, this is very dangerous. Um, and the ayah here specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, um, Because if, after the Prophet Sallallahu actually went, there are people who stayed. And after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came, um, the, the, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they chose to lie about why they did, couldn't do it. Some of them said, oh, you know, like I was whatever, like my sister or my brother, whatever. Like they made up excuses to kind of make the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgive them. Um, again, this is another question to ask yourself. Like if you were the one who to stay, right? Like you decided to stay. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, would you lie? Would you say the truth and then look very, very like bad in front of all the Sahaba and the people, right? This is another question to ask yourself. What if I've done? What would I have? What would I have done in this situation? Um, and and once you come to realization, 
Uh, it could be like a time for you to kind of like rethink, why would you do that? What are you afraid of? Are you, are you in love with dunya so much? Are you like this? So starting to ask yourself these questions are very important. Um, so anyways, the ayah here is talking about those people who came to the Prophet Sallallahu and lied about um, why they stayed. Um, and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said about them that if they wanted to come out, if they wanted to come out with you, they would have prepared for it before. But Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala had hated them to go out. That's why he made them stay. You know, so what, what kind of a heart um, state that someone will be in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hate for them to go and fight for his sake, you know? Um, so that's why monitor always your heart and ask yourself, am I now in a time where um, if this happened tomorrow, will I go or will I be with the people who actually stay, um, right? Um, and uh, again, the same question is, well, is there something similar in my life, right? Like, for example, like maybe Fajr praying, I'm struggling with it. Is is it similar to that? Maybe I'm having some not so halal job. Is it similar to this? Um, so all of these questions you ask yourself and and kind of like put it within the lens, understand what you what you should be doing. Um, the other um, the other thing as well, um, or the other tool that you can use is to remember is whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, talk about talk to His Prophet is generally for His Ummah too which means that you are, you are talked to as well, uh, not just the Prophet ﷺ. Um, so when you hear, yeah, you're a Nabi or, or, or you're a Prophet, don't think, oh, this is not for me. Let me just skip. No, it's actually for you too. Except there are some very small situations and it's very obvious that this is only for the Prophet ﷺ, right? Um, and sometimes it's not that obvious, but it's very few. Uh, but in general, this is, this, is the, this is the rule. The other rule as well is... Um, if there is a reward for the Prophet ﷺ in the Quran, generally, it is for, for his ummah too, as long as they stay on his path. So it's, it gets as close or as far from how close you are to the Prophet ﷺ, right? Uh, an example for that is Surah Al-Duha, for example, right? Allah SWT says, Al-Duha, Al-Layhi Idha Sajah. Uh, right? uh, that, uh, means that what is coming is better than what was before and the hereafter for you is better than this dunya right so you can also think about it the same thing right like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me that too if i if i am in the path of the prophet um, the other one as well is to ask yourself it's what is the connection right um, so, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by something, and then he, he mentioned after that, what is the swearing by, there is, there is usually a connection between the two. For example, in Surah Al-Adiyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal-Adiyat al-Dabha fal-Muriyat al-Qadha fal-Mughirat al-Subha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by the, the, the horses running so fast um, in, the, in the time of Subh time, like after Fajr. Um, and they're running so fast towards an enemy and they don't stop until they are literally in the middle of the battlefield, in the middle of the, like, kind of like the, the enemy battlefield. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for, for sure, the insan for his Lord is ungrateful. Insan, the human are ungrateful. Um, so when you think about like, what is the connection between the two? Like why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that kind of like story about it before he mentions that the, the human are um, not grateful. And the connection here is um, like, when you think about it, the horses are running to what it could be their death, right? Like they are running towards enemy that have like um, maybe some um, arrows in their hands. They maybe have some swords and all of that. They can easily kill the horses. Yet the horses listen to their masters and they continue running um, to, their, to their basically death. So why would a horse do that, right? If you think about it, what does this master did to that horse for him, for him to listen to him like that? All what he did is just like maybe fed him, um, made him made him like good place. Make him drink water. Maybe like calm his hair and and clean him, and that's it, right? Um, and the horse is ready to die for his master because of that. Compared to that, to the human and what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has done for us, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has provided us with everything, and yet we are very ungrateful compared to the horse, um, right? So this is like kind of like to think about the connection, and and you'll be able to get uh, beautiful meanings out of it. Uh, and of course, if you don't like, it's good to also ask the question, even if you don't know the answer um, and ask the scholar about the answer or read about the answer and all of that. Um, the other thing as well is um, read to apply, right? Like when you read, try to always think, am I there or not? 
right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for, the, for example, in the Quran, um, uh, about the believers. Uh, and it, he, he said it uh, for us to be grateful about this blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَكِنَّ Allah حَبَّذَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانُ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the iman uh, good in your heart, made you love the iman, and made it so beautiful in your hearts, right? So you ask yourself, is the iman beautiful in my heart? If not, that means I have something to do. I'm doing something wrong. Is it the sin that I'm doing? Maybe I should stay away from the sins. Is it that? Is it that, right? And then the other one, which is very dangerous, especially for people living here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And he made it so hateful for you. He made disbelieving hateful for you. He made fusuq and isyan hateful for you. It's like sinning is hateful for you, right? So if you today see um, kufr happening in front of your eyes and you don't feel that that hate to that kufr in front of your eyes, that is a problem. If you see people committing sins and you don't feel hatred towards that sin, that's a problem, right? Especially we're living here, we're getting used to it, right? Like you're using, you're seeing it like regularly. So sometimes you forget and you just get used to it, which is very dangerous. Um, so when you read this ayah, you always like think, okay, am I there? What should I do to be there? Um, and all of that. Uh, the other one as well is to understand the humankind um, from the creator. It always wonders, like it always boggles my mind that people spend so much time um, reading about, reading books about the human nature and how to deal with human and what is everything. And they didn't spend half of the time in the Quran, uh, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the human. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows the human the most, right? Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran multiple places how the human are. Like for example, in one of the ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ Insan is khuliq, like is in a state of fear. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا when he, when he gets a glimpse of, um, of evil or a glimpse of something bad happen, he just like scares, like he's so scared, this is it, this is the end of it. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ مَنُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا And once he, something comes to him good, he actually try to like protect it, not like spread it out and give it to everybody and every land. Um, except al-musallin except the people who are um, constantly praying uh, because they remember uh, they're in constant connection with Allah ta'ala remember the, the meaning of this life and all of that so this is tell Allah ta'ala telling you about the state of your heart and the state of your nafs and how to deal with her and all of that um, the other one as well for example is Allah ta'ala said فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمَهُ like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the story about two people one person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him um, like so much in this dunya so he thinks oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me blessings and the other one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him as much in this dunya so he thinks oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has humiliated me is not giving me enough and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no kalla it's all test, right? It doesn't matter if you have much or it doesn't have, it doesn't matter if you have less. Allah, the Prophet ﷺ died um, and, and his dirah was with the, with the Jewish. He didn't have anything to give. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ used to have like, uh, Aisha said, uh, there used to be months and months we didn't put any fire because there's no meat, there's nothing that needs fire in the house. Um, so that means the Prophet Allah does not love the Prophet, of course not. Um, so this is also like to drive some um, some life rules out of it. And subhanAllah, like when you when you listen today, for example, to some of the um, reasons why some Muslims become atheists, and then you read the Quran, you see it clearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered all these questions. Like if you if you're someone who read the Quran and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you, you will not even ask this question. Question like why evil exists, right? This is one of the questions that um, makes lots of people become atheists for some reason, as if if they became atheists, the, the evil will stop. It doesn't. Um, um, so uh, I don't know why they, 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 they choose to be uh, atheist. What are they helping with? But anyways, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that this life will have lots of ibtila. This life will have lots of testing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said um, the people before us went through more than that. They died themselves, right? Um, and all of that. So like, what is the surprise there? You shouldn't be surprised that this happened, uh, let alone to be atheist when it happens. Um, the other one, uh, or the, the last one as well before finishing, inshallah, is read the Quran um, with, with some questions in mind, right? So let's assume you want to ask yourself, how, what is the best way to deal with my parents? What is the best way to deal with my family? And you read the Quran with that intention. Um, it's similar to, subhanAllah, like if you, for example, thinking about buying a new car or um, if you're thinking about a specific store, and you start seeing that store everywhere. You're starting seeing that, that car everywhere. It's just, it's not that before the car wasn't there. It was, but you didn't focus on it. Similar thing that happens. If you think, if you read the Quran with a specific question, um, your mind will actually 
be more attentive to, to anything that has related to this question. So for example, with the idea of a parent, you read Surah Yusuf, there is a beautiful examples of how to deal with a parent. Like Yusuf alayhi salam talking to his parents, um, the, or to Yaqub alayhi salam, the, the sons of Yaqub, you're talking to Yaqub alayhi salam, uh, the story of Ibrahim as well. So you read the Quran with that intention, you will find actually uh, lots of gems and lots of uh, treasures in there. Okay, uh, I think we're done, inshallah. Um, if anyone have questions, I'll, I'll check it in the Yeah, I think you're talking about the hem. Uh, this is saying depression. Yeah, you're right. Depression could be a good translation of hem, I guess, as well. Okay, the question says, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Which would be a better thing to do, study the Quran or take course on emotional intelligence from Islamic perspective? Um, it depends on the course, honestly. Um, I myself um, have of the opinion that those courses are good, um, but you shouldn't just do courses. Um, the, the connection with the Quran should be a life um, time goal like it's literally the, a project of life uh, that starts from the time you realize until you you die um, and every time you read the quran you will come with something new every time you read the quran you will get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being in that state um, is is uh, is priceless um, so sure like there's no reason not to go for both per se but like connection with the quran i would say is the is the top priority and this is the dua as well, if someone um, wants to. Any more questions? Okay, so you mentioned it is better to, p to pray at night and read Quran at night, didn't Allah? create night for us to rest so we can be re-energized to begin our day productively. Yes, correct. Uh, so when you see the Prophet ﷺ, how he used to sleep, he used to sleep half of the night and then he would wake up third of it and then he would sleep sixth of it. Um, so that is the best way to divide your night. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ also used to sleep um i think take a nap as well in the in the morning so this is the best way if you can um there is the, the only problem here in in the months of uh summer the uh, the night is very very short so this is a problem but definitely in winter you can easily do it um you can actually sleep um, pretty good hours and also wake up and do this Any more questions? Cool. There is no more questions. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, Subhanakallah, Mabihamdik, Nashadu Allah, Ilaha, 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 Nastaghfiru, Kwanatu, Walaik, Assalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi, Barakatuh.